Yo, what's going on YouTube? Uh, Zach with Learn Cybersecurity. Today we are talking about installing Kali Linux on a Windows operating system. Uh, the same could be said if you're installing Kali Linux on a Mac operating system as well, because we have to download a actual image. And it's something that I actually discovered as I was trying to figure out why I could not get Kali to install correctly on my Windows operating system or my Mac OS. And then I actually had to read a little bit further to figure out why. But anyway, um, what we need to do is if you haven't already downloaded VirtualBox, go to virtualbox.org and download that, install that, get it ready to go. And the next thing that we're gonna do is gonna go to Kali.org and go to the download section and it'd help if I could uh, show you guys what we're doing. So VirtualBox and then Kali.org and we'll go to downloads and then we're gonna scroll all the way down until we get to Kali Linux 64-bit VBox. And then we're gonna click on available on the offensive security download page. And from here, we'll scroll down and right here, we're gonna click on Kali Linux VirtualBox images and we're gonna download uh, the image that we need. So if you need 32-bit operating system, you're gonna click on that one. If you need 64-bit, you'll click on that one. So I downloaded 64-bit and that's already been downloaded. We're ready to go. So I'm going to open up VirtualBox and I'm going to click on File and Import an Appliance. And we're gonna click on the, the folder here and we're gonna to go to where our downloads are. And my folder structure is all jacked up right now. So don't make fun of it. And we're gonna to go to uh, click on this uh, virtual box file right here. So you can click on open and we're just gonna click on next. And we are going to um, click on import and we're gonna let, let this do its thing. It's gonna take a few minutes here. Um, but the importance of this is a lot of people are wondering how they can virtualize Linux. So what the importance of Linux is, before you even think about virtualizing it is, Linux is very widely used throughout the security field. Now it's not a requirement by any means, but in a lot of the security jobs, it is something that you will, will need to know something about. Now Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux that is heavily built on providing the tools pre-installed within the operating system for you know um, cybersecurity professionals, infosec professionals, and things like that. There's a lot of you know ethical hacking tools that come pre-installed on Kali Linux, uh, so it's it's you know one of the preferred distributions of Linux that um, people in the cybersecurity industry use you can use whatever version of Linux you would like to learn the operating system. And I strongly encourage everybody to learn Linux anyway, because it's one of those things that you're going to run across at some point in your career, uh, whether you think you are or you're not. Uh, Linux is across well, it's over 70%, 90%, I think, of the, the web servers that are out there right now. Uh, over 50% of Azure servers are Linux servers, which is insane to me. I mean, that's fantastic. So, uh, and smart devices. How about, you know, like this, Amazon Echo. There's there's Linux on that. So think about all the the encounters that you have with Linux and you may not even realize it. So if you're really considering this field, Linux is definitely something to learn. So again, Kali does not have to be your preferred um, uh, operating system to, to learn from. You can download Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, whatever the case may be. Uh, download that, install it, virtualize it, and learn it. So we're just doing Kali Linux because uh, it's something that I wanted to play around with. It's something that I just wanted to uh, really kind of understand what some of the tools were and just open them up, recognize some of the names, because as you start getting familiar with the cybersecurity field, you'll start hearing people talk about some of these different tools or you'll start reading about some of these different tools. You're, gonna not, you're not gonna have any idea what they're talking about, but you can open up a virtualized um, image here of Kali and you can look at this tool that they're talking about and at least have a visualization of it. And that's kind of what I'm doing because I want to have the, this visual image of what it is that people are using. So that's why I do it. And that's why I'm trying to virtualize Kali Linux. 
I've been rambling and rambling, so we're gonna let it do its thing. We're gonna come back to it. So now that it's finished loading, we're gonna click on the correct image here. I have already installed it previously, and this is the underscore one, so I know that this is the second uh, instance of Kali that I have installed. So I'll click on it, and then I can click on start, and then it's gonna start up the Kali Linux um, operating system here. And it popped up in a, uh-oh. Failed to open a session details. What the? Oh, so here's here's a funny message, uh, and I didn't even show you guys on the screen, so that was my bad. I'll, I'll show you again because we actually have to disable uh, USB 2.0 controller. So we'll click on OK, and we're going to right click and do settings. So if you come across this error, you guys will know how to fix this. Now I'll click on USB, and we're just going to uncheck enable USB controller, and click OK. And you can click on this and click on start, or you can right click and um, click on start also, normal start. And we'll let it boot up. This time it should work. All right, so now you're gonna come to a login field. And if you go back to the offensive security page, we can see here these images have a default password of Tor and may have pre-generated SSH host keys. So that's all good and dandy. Uh, we can go back to our instance of Kali here. The username is pretty much always going to be root when you're first logging into a Linux system. So the password is T-O-O-R, and we're gonna sign in, and we'll see what we come across now. So what's nice about this is you don't actually have to go through the process of uh, formatting drives, um, going through selecting some of the different options for your language, keyboard, and things like that. It's just ready to go right off the bat. So now we can kind of go around and uh, play around with some of the different tools that come pre-installed with Kali Linux. Again, a lot of this stuff I would not suggest that you try to play with in a malicious way or even try to play with if you really don't have a general understanding of what it's going to do. Make sure that if you're going to look into uh, Barbecue SQL, for instance, uh, you are following some type of tutorial online on how it works. Don't just think that you're going to get into some of these different applications and tools here and figure them out initially. Make sure you're at least reading some of the, the readme files, the, the help that comes along with them, and again, following some tutorials. So this was just a quick video on installing Kali Linux on a Windows operating system. And again, it's pretty much the same with a Mac operating system. If you guys have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comments below. I know we didn't talk too much on really um, the really the real importance of this, but we will in further videos. This is just something that I wanted to get out of the way because it's something that I'm trying to start playing with right away. And I figured, hey, why not make a video on this? So uh, if you guys want to let me know what type of videos you want to see as I'm going through my cybersecurity journey, you let me know and uh, we'll try to make those. So stay tuned.